This is Tom Fox. I think everyone knows of my love for classic monster movies. I have blogged about them, I have podcasted about them, I have talked about them, and I've decided for the month of October, I'm going to mine great monsters, great mad scientists, and some of these creations for leadership lessons for compliance practitioners. So over the month of October on Popcorn and Compliance, I'm going to feature Frankenstein, the Wolfman, the Mummy, Count Dracula, perhaps the Invisible Man, perhaps some mad scientists. It's going to be a fun exploration of a topic that uh, I thoroughly enjoy, and it's certainly near and dear to my heart. I hope you will join me as today we take up that most mad of mad scientists, Dr. Moreau, from the islands of lost souls. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, and we'll be right back. The Islands of Lost Souls is a pre-code movie that is perhaps, along with Freaks, one of the most disturbing movies I saw as a teenager. In preparing for this podcast to, by re-watching the movie, I was equally struck again how disturbing this movie is. It's a 1932 production of an H.G. Wells 1896 novel entitled The Island of Dr. Moreau. It was directed by Eric Kenton, and it starred Charles Lawton, Richard Arlen, Leah Hymans, Bella Lugosi, and Kathleen Burke. The plot centers on a remote South Pacific island where a very mad scientist, Dr. Moreau, secretly conducts experiments to accelerate evolution in plants and animals, often with horrific consequences. Featuring depictions of cruelty, animal-human hybrids, and irreligious ideas, the release was embroiled in controversy and it was banned for decades. Nevertheless, today it is one of the most influential films in the horror genre and has acquired cult status. The plot of the movie is a shipwrecked traveler is rescued by a freighter delivering animals to an isolated South Sea island owned by Dr. Moreau. After this traveler, Edward Parker, fights with the freighter's drunken captain, he, um, the captain tosses Parker overboard onto a boat bound for Moreau's island. When Parker arrives at the island, Moreau welcomes him to his home and introduces him to Lota, a young woman who Moreau originally claims is of Polynesian origin and who seems shy and withdrawn. When she and Parker hear screams coming from another room, Lota tells him that's the house of pain. Parker goes and takes a look, and he finds Moreau and Moreau's assistant, Montgomery, operating on a humanoid creature without anesthetic. Convinced that Moreau is engaged in sadistic vivisection, Parker tries to leave, only to encounter a brutish-looking humanoid resembling an ape, feline, and a swine, and other beasts who emerge or which emerge from the jungle. Moreau appears and cracks his whip and orders them to recite a series of rules which are called the law. Back in the main house, the doctor tries to assuage Parker by explaining his scientific work. They started experimenting London years ago, accelerating the evolution of plants. He then progressed to animals, trying to transform them into humans through plastic surgery, blood transfusion, gland extracts, and ray baths. When a dog hybrid escaped from his laboratory, it so horrified people that Moreau himself was forced to leave England. Moreau confides to Parker that Lola, Lota rather, is the sole female on the island and hides that she is derived actually from a panther. Later, he privately expresses his excitement to Montgomery that Lota is showing human emotions in her attraction to Parker. He can keep observing this process, so he can do so. Moreau ensures that Parker cannot leave by destroying the only available boat, placing the blame on the beast men. As Parker spends time with Lota, she falls in love with him. After the two kiss, Parker is stricken with grief uh, as he still loves his fiancée, Ruth Thomas. Lola hugs him, 
Parker examine, examines her fingernails, which are reverting to animalistic claws. He storms into Moreau's office to confront him about hiding the truth of Loda. Moreau explains that Loda is his most nearly human creation, and he wanted to see if she was capable of love with a human being and bearing human like children. Enraged by the deceit, Parker punches Moreau to the ground and demands to leave the island. When Monroe, Moreau realizes Lota is beginning to revert to her panther or origins, he despairs, believing he has failed, until he notices her weeping, which, of course, is human emotion. His hopes are raised, and he screams that he will not, that he rather will burn out the remaining animal in her in the house of pain. Meanwhile, back in the original destination of Edward Parker, Apia, which is in Samoa, uh, they learn about Parker's location from the uh, ship captain who threw him overboard. Parker's fiancée, Ruth, Thomas persuades a Captain Donahue to take her to Moreau's island. She's reunited with Parker, but Moreau per- per- persuades them to stay the night. The ape-themed Uran, one of Moreau's creations, tries to break into Ruth's room. She wakes up and screams for help, and Iran is driven away. Montgomery confronts Moreau and implies that Iran's attempted break-in was arranged by Moreau. Donahue offers to reach the ship and fetch his crew, and Moreau dispatches Iran to strangle him. Learning that Moreau has allowed Iran to break the law, the other beast men no longer feel bound by it. They set their huts ablaze and defy Moreau, who tries and fails to regain control. He demands from them what is the law, and their response is, the law is no more. The beastmen drag the doctor into the house of pain, where they operate on him with surgical knives. With the help of Montgomery, Parker and Ruth make their escape. Parker insists they take Lota along, but when Lota sees a run following, she awaits an ambush. In the ensuing struggle, they are both killed. The others escape the island by flames, uh, presumably destroying Moreau's work and eradicating the beast men. Obviously, the movie was shot in black and white, so that is still part of its attraction. And the portrayal by Charles Lockton of Moreau really is the finest example I can think of of a truly mad scientist. Uh, as I mentioned, it's pre-code, so there's some some pretty skimpy outfits in uh, this sh- uh, show, particularly around Loda as the Catwoman. The um, film itself, I think, still holds up, although Lofton uh, at some points plays the role in really high camp. At one point, he leans back and almost bats his eyelashes uh, at Parker, but that really does not begin to tell a story of the horror of this island. Indeed, the last words are, don't look back, and they stay with you, um, because what happened at the island was a very disturbing cavalcade of uh, savagery and brutality uh, when you uh, think about it. The um, island is populated by a bevy of what we used to call freaks, but these are a combination of half-men and half beast. They're smart enough to speak, but they're still trying to comprehend free will. They're obviously in terror of Dr. Moreau as he brutally created him, and that's really the only thing that keeps it in line. Uh, it's an island filled with shadows, madness, primal anger, um, but which boats uh, do not really go to. The uh, panther woman, Loda, uh, has been transformed from a beast, and she's Moreau's special project. He's gotten bored of trying to create life with a surgeon's knife in the uh, House of Pain, and he wants to see if he can get a human and an animal woman to reproduce in the old-fashioned way. Uh, Even if you find that disturbing, uh, that's just one part of the disturbing, disturbing things. As Moreau goes, grows bolder, he goes from trying to politely manage one interspecies coupling to forcing another. And 
Uh, it's filled with a rape, an attempted rape, an implied rape galore, and um, it's really very, very twisted and sinister. Sinister, and this is all led by Moreau. Um, there's lots of things you can read into the movie. Picking apart the film's metaphors is quite the treat. Lofton uh, p- plays the role, as I said, campy uh, in a prim white suit and a pointed goatee. But uh, one commentator said he really looked like a rotund Satan. Um, and the film um, attempts to mate. Loda and Edward on the Lush Island actually may resemble the story of Adam, Adam and Eve um, in a way that probably none of us had thought of before. Um, others have noted that Moray's subjugation of the tormented men has, is a direct take on colonialism and slavery. Um, that's certainly uh, one more of the interpretation. Bella Lugosi is actually quite powerful as the sayer of the laws and the leader of the beasts. Um, as a, It's interesting to watch the South Pacific. Um, I think that's something that we've noted in be- before, how movies from the 30s operated as travelogues in many ways. But think about Parker's fiance Ruth, waiting for him on the island of Abia, which is dominated by white people dressed nicely, and the uh, native inhabitants dressed in como, uh, kimonos and other native wear. While colonialism seems quaint now, uh, watching this makes you remember how different the world was when there were a handful of rich white nations. Uh, The lighting, uh, you know, I'm a huge lighting track uh, shot fan, so there's a couple. The lighting is fabulous, and it's a presentation uh, of the early uh, visual aspects of film uh, along with sound that I really like. There's a couple of crane shots that were used that uh, I found really interesting as well. So what are we to make about this film? As I mentioned, I thought Lofton had some camp roles in here, but I was really interested in the mad scientist. That was a huge trope in the middle of part of this century, and in thinking about it in the context of 2022, The mad scientist may be the coder. It may be the person who tries to bring artificial intelligence to life. So I think the trope still exists, and I think it's still a valid trope, trope, but it was incredibly powerful in uh, the 1930s. Obviously, Dr. Frankenstein, Dr. Jekyll, uh, and a whole host of other mad scientists uh, populated the movies But this one was not only mad, but uh, I would have to say quite evil as well. So the leadership lessons may be in reverse here, but I hope that uh, you'll watch this movie and take your own interpretation away around Dr. Moreau, uh, Edward Parker, uh, the role his fiance played in saving him, and of course, Loda, the panther woman who made the ultimate sacrifice Uh, She killed Aruna uh, before he could kill Parker or harm Parker's fiance. I hope you'll join me next week where we take up one of the great monsters of fiction, the Golem. This is Tom Fox again. Thank you for listening to this episode of Popcorn and Compliance. I'd also like to tell you about a great new podcast series, which has premiered on the Compliance Podcast Network. That's The Corruption Files, where with Hughes Hubbard partner Mike D. Bernardis, we take a look at some of the top anti-corruption compliance enforcement actions across the globe. It's a great review of enforcement actions, literally 15 years old and coming forward, what they meant then and what they continue to mean now, all on the Compliance Podcast Network. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.